some pancake locks you're having a hard time opening, no problem, you found the right video. This is gonna be a three part video. Part one, I'm gonna tell you all about, I'm gonna tell you about the tools you're gonna to have to make and use to open these locks. Video two, I'm gonna show you how do you put those tools in use. In video three, we're gonna take step one through the end as I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna decode and use all these tools to open a lock that I haven't opened yet. Okay, by the time I post these videos, I should receive a lock from Jeff Moss that I, he has no key to, I've never seen it, never played to it, and we're gonna go through it together, opening it from using the simplest method and so forth. All right, so stay tuned. Let's begin with the tools you need, okay? Um, before that, let me just say, these locks are, uh, for lack of a better word, just amazing, fantastic. I mean, from the craftsmanship to the machining to, you know, the, the security, it's just amazing. If you haven't played with one of these or you've never owned one, do yourself a favor and get one. And you, believe me, you're not going to regret it. Okay, so let's uh, briefly look inside. Okay, this is what's going on inside. Okay, this is the hasp. These are the levers. There's six of them. Each lever has its own cut. All right, at different depths. Now, when the proper key is inserted, these levers rise uh, rise at its own depth, making this space unique uh, and clear. That's why this bolt can get can go right in there. Once the bolt goes in, clears the shackle, shackle pops open, the lock is open. Now, another beautiful thing is once it's open, these levers are at the opening position. And from there, you could measure exactly see how the key is supposed to be. All right, these are the levers. As you can see, they all have their independent cuts. That's the bolt. All right, so that's that's what's going on inside. Now, there are several methods of opening. Like I said, uh, we'll we'll take a closer look of that uh, in the second video. But let's talk about the tools you're gonna need. Number one, a great buddy of mine, uh, the Lock Butcher, and I'll post up his video where he actually took one of these apart and you know shows you what's inside and also shows a video of how to open it. Okay, he made this tool. Okay, and it's nothing more than a binder clip and he used two, which I recommend as well, it's easier. Two pieces of wood and these finished nails. All right, this as you could see are nail gun nails. They're all stuck together, they come in a strip. Okay, you need six of them. The important part, the critical part, they have to be 18 gauge. Okay, because the size of the 18 gauge is just right for the levers, all right? So you take them all apart, I'm sorry. You take them all apart, you put them between the piece of wood and you bind it up, right? And there you go, that's the tool, all right? Now, if you actually wanna invest some more time and make yourself a better tool, I'm actually in the works of making one right now. Uh, sorry, one second. Let me just get the piece, here we go. All right, you, you can make yourself one of these tools. All right, let me just get these locks a little out of the way. You can make yourself this. Now this is much better because you can control the tension with the screws, okay? Um, this is what I used. This is part of a hinge. As you can see, the price is still here. This is three bucks, okay? I cut it to lengths, as you could see on this one. Drilled holes, tapped them, and finishing it up, all right? And here are the nails. They come glued together. I dropped them in some acetone, took all that glue out, and they're very nice. You also might want to sand the tips because they come pretty sharp, and you really don't want to stick anything sharp in there. So just sand them with some uh, sandpaper and make them nice and round, okay? So that's that. Another critical part, metal metal on metal. No matter how much you tension it, it's, it's not going to work. You need something in between there. I use leather. Two pieces of leather in between they're gonna go here this is gonna be closed up and this is what you're gonna get okay like I said the beauty of it you could tension it how much you want light not light if you really want to get into these locks either of the tools is critical you won't be able to well you might be able to but it's gonna be very difficult and extra work I mean one of these tools was around two dollars to make as you can see this piece of metal is very long you could it yields what, roughly two, four, you can make two tools from this, okay, easy, it's three bucks. So that's, that's one of the tools, okay. Then we're moving on, okay. This is tool number two, okay. This is nothing more than a thin windshield wiper insert, okay. 
or you could use your thin um, tension tool. The thickness of this doesn't really matter, okay? And the thickness of this has some importance, but... Okay, mine, and I'll show you exactly. This is the smallest one, and this is 95, okay, 95 thousandths. I trimmed that down to approximately 72 thousandths, okay? If it's 70 or 65, it doesn't matter. Or even if it's 80, it doesn't matter. Just, you don't want to go, you don't want to be at 95 or more, okay? That's, that's going to cause you some headaches, okay? And then, you need to also file down to make this tip. You see that little tip right there? Okay. My little tip is 12 thousandths, okay? If it's 10 or 15, that's still fine okay but you don't want to make this uh you know 20 30 or something somewhere around 10 15 thousandths is fine okay another critical part is it has to be 90 degrees okay if it's going to be round it's going to cause you headaches so make it 90 degrees both the inside uh, angle 90 degrees and this has to be flat 90 okay that's tool number two tool number three is a simple piece of wire now this is actually a uh, wire I got from a flower store. I'm sure you can go to any flower store and get it for free. Uh, or you could even use those uh, wire ties. Just strip out the plastic and use that. Okay. Piece of wire. Bent it to give me a little handle. Also made a 90, 90 degree turn on this as well. You see that angle? Yeah, you could see it. Okay. The only thing is with wire is when you bend it, it kind of flares out on the side. So what you want to do is just file it down. Okay. Uh, and... Of course, the thickness of this will depend on your lock. I'll just tell you that mine is uh, 19. It seems a little big. Yeah, okay, 19. Okay, 19,000 thick. Okay, sometimes 25 will work. Sometimes 15 will work. Sometimes 10. Like I said, depending on the tolerances. Uh, actually, not the tolerance, but depending on the lever thickness in your lock. And I'll get into depth on that later. Uh, okay. I think we've discussed all the tools here, which you're going to need to make. Um, let me just, while we have some time, step into here. Okay, this is another picture of the internals. Okay, you see this is the, this is the shackle, this is that bolt, these are the levers, springs, and so forth. Okay, and these levers go up, the bolt goes in, and voila, the padlock is open. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to putting these tools into work.